Hello guys, welcome to another IT tutorial. In this tutorial, we will going to be discussing these topics. As you can see here in the list, that we will be discussing API, Web Services, SOAP REST, and SOAP versus REST. Some of the people in the industry are using these and they're advocates of one technology or the other. Some have used both of them. So we'll just talk about these concepts today so that you may understand what they are and how they are used. So to start the process, we will going to start this with API. API, what is it and why do we use it and what exactly it can do for us? API stands for Application Programming Interface. As the name suggests, it's an interface. It allows two entities to communicate with each other. So when it comes to application programming, as you can see the words application programming, it's a programming for creating applications. So API is an interface that allows programmers when they're developing applications or software so that their programs can communicate with each other. So two or more programs, in order for them to communicate with each other, they need some kind of a bridging. And API provides that kind of a bridging. So now that leads us into our next topic, web services. Web services is basically a service offered by an electronic device to another electronic device communicating with each other using some kind of a medium and in this case the medium is World Wide Web. That's why they're called web services. So these are services offered by one electronic device to another electronic device. These two electronic devices could be computers, could be a laptop and a server, uh, could be a, a tablet and a server, uh, could be two mobile phones, any electronic device. Uh, with, with we moving forward, Internet of Things, we, not, we are basically stepping into the area where things will going to communicate with each other. Your car communicating with your phone system at home or your, your thermostat at home. Uh, your home will probably be managed by one central device which you could hook up to uh, your network and then it could be accessed via web services. So web services basically are services, electronic services that are provided or allows communicating between two devices using internet or World Wide Web. Okay, why am I using World Wide Web versus internet? Internet basically is the infrastructure. It's the hardware infrastructure. World Wide Web is basically a set of services or resources that we run on internet infrastructure. That is why when you have a hardware failure, you always say, my internet is down. You never say my web is down. But when you are not being able to connect to web or internet, now you can use both resources because it could be a hardware problem or a software problem, which is your web. So web is more or less a software entity and internet is more or less a hardware entity. Okay. So that basically gives an idea that what exactly is a web service. Web service is a service given to you over the web. And what kind of service is this? It is a service which allows two entities to communicate with each other. Now let's talk about what are some of the web services. So we're going to talk about two web services today. One is called SOAP and one is called REST. Okay? So what is SOAP? SOAP is very, very old. It's not something new. SOAP stands for Simple Object Access Protocol. As you can see by its name, it is a protocol. Okay? So what is a protocol? Protocol is a set of rules by which entities communicate. So that is why when you go into the networking world, they have a lot of communication going on within computer, between computers, and across the network. And for every communication, they have a protocol like SMTP, Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. PA is we we have uh, POP, uh, we have um, SNMP, we have HTTP, we have TCP, we have IP. All of these are protocols, UDP. All of these are protocols. Protocols is a way by which two entities can communicate. So SOAP is a protocol which allows an exchange of information between two entities that can't otherwise talk with each other. So basically, it allows two entities to communicate with each other when there is no other way to communicate. So in other words, it needs a very well-structured, well-formed way of communication. SOAP as a protocol came about after XML. What was the reason of XML? XML allows you to create your own HTML. So HTML is very, very structured in a sense that you can only work with whatever elements are given to you. XML allows you to create your own elements. 
and it allows you to give your elements your own meaning. So with XML, we have so many markup languages that came in the industry, like we have PaintML, we have PhysicsML, we have MathML, we have so many different kind of markup languages. And they're all based on XML because XML allows you to create your own markups and that allows you to create your own markup language. But they're all XML based. So SOAP uses a lot of XML. It's a rather XML based entity. So it's a, it's a mechanism by which you can communicate when there is no other way to communicate between two entities. So SOAP basically follows what we call a messaging format. So it has a message header, a message body, and so and so forth. And it sends a message from one end to another end using XML formatting. And on the other end, the message is decoded. If you've ever seen XML, XML is like a markup which have an opening and a closing tag, or an opening and a closing element. Let me show you an example, just so that you understand. Here is a SOAP envelope. So SOAP envelope, so SOAP envelope. So SOAP is basically my namespace, envelope is the name of my element. So SOAP envelope, these are my XML namespaces that I'm using here. So I have a SOAP header and a SOAP body. In my SOAP body, I have get student name. So get student name is the name of my element. So this element that I've created has a child element called student name, which holds a value mark Anthony. This could very well be used to send stock pricing. It could very well be used for billing. Anything and everything that I want to send over from one system to another system when there is no other way to communicate here we go, SOAP is the way to do that. Now you may ask, well, why can't I send a regular text file? Because the text files are not, not structured. That's why you would use SOAP, because as you can see, it's far structured. Also, you, can, you, you have built-in APIs. Again, what is an API? It is an interface that allows programmers to communicate with things that they can't otherwise communicate. So there is an API in programming languages like Java and VB and C Sharp, which allows those programming languages to talk to a SOAP message, open it, decode it, and work with it. So that's where the API comes in. So API allows a program or a programming language to talk to an entity that it otherwise cannot communicate. So this allows the SOAP to communicate with a programming language and programming language to communicate with a SOAP using this API. If this API is used over the web, it's a web service. Okay. Now let's move on to the next item in the list. That was REST. REST is not like the picture shows. You're not resting. REST stands for representational state transfer. Representational state transfer, or in other way, uh, in other words, uh, commonly used as REST, RESTful web services. RESTful web services. So web services that are provided by using the technology called REST, which is representational state transfer. But then comes a the question, what exactly is the REST? It is a way of providing interoperability. That means, again, when two computers on the internet or the World Wide Web cannot communicate, REST allows them a communication mechanism. So it's a way of providing interoperability between computer systems on the internet. It uses a set of uniform and predefined set of stateless operations. Stateless operations. Now let me give you a little bit of what exactly is a stateless operation. A stateless operation uses stateless protocol. Oh, what is a stateless protocol? Let me give you an example. If you are on Google, you go to google.com and you make a search. And you make a search and the search return a result. So now when you make another search on Google, the Google will going to forget about you after the first search is done. He doesn't remember you. So when you do a next search, it's a brand new search. Similarly, when you click one web link, even on the same site, it doesn't, remember, it, it doesn't remember you from click to click. Every click is a brand new click. Every click is a brand new click, if it's stateless. That is why when you are using your email, you're forced to do what? Sign in for a couple of reasons. Number one, security, because this is something private. Second of all, the web page to web page remembers you. If you are on the inbox page, when you go to drafts page, when you go to trash, it remembers you because now it's not stateless, it's stateful. It remembers you. So it, it, it basically keeps track of your session. Stateless, on the other hand, doesn't keep track of your session. So there is no session. There is no acknowledgement between sender and receiver. So a stateless protocol does not require the server to retain session information or status about each communicating partner for the duration of the multiple request. On the other hand, stateful allows you to do that. So in communication mode, 
Stateful and stateless are two ideas that are used. So again, what is REST? It is a set of uniform and predefined set of stateless operation. Okay, so that is faster than a regular communication, but stateless. So we understood what stateless means. Now let's continue about the REST. Okay, so a RESTful web service, okay, in a RESTful web service, requests are made to a resource. So it's extremely resource focused. So whenever you are requesting something, it has to be a resource. Versus in SOAP, it's a protocol. So here we have resources. Every resource in a RESTful API, okay, again I'm using the word RESTful API, it's an interface that allows a programming language to ca talk to this 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 architecture called rest and then it is done over the internet so it's a web service okay so every resource has a uri uniform resource locator is url it's in, it's it's a way of identifying a uniform resource so this is a uniform resource identifier it will cause a response it will cause a response. It will going to so in a RESTful web service, request made to a resource URI will send a response back to the requester. And now the response could be in an XML form, could be in an HTML form, could be in a JSON form, or could be in any other defined format. So it's not locked in XML, just like SOAP. SOAP is locked in XML, but REST is not. Again. If you are comparing SOAP to REST, it's basically comparing apples and oranges. They are incomparable. You should not even be comparing them. But if you really, really want to compare them, here are a few things to consider. SOAP is a protocol. SOAP is a protocol. REST is an architecture style. The main difference between SOAP and REST is the degree of coupling between client and server implementations. REST is protocol independent. It's not coupled to HTTP alone. REST might not either be restricted to XML. It is to any of the well-defined formats we talked about. It could very well be in a JSON format that basically makes it a lot more acceptable and adoptable where people are moving to JSON, which is a totally different topic. JavaScript object notation, okay? so. I have done another tutorial where we learn about how Java can read write JSON, but that's not discussed over here. So re we're here, we're just discussing REST versus SOAP. So REST concepts are, in, in REST, concepts are referred to as what? Resources. So a representation of a resource must be stateless, so it doesn't remember. It is represented via some kind of a media type. For example, that media type could be XML, JSON, anything. And again, these resources are manipulated by components. Components request and manipulate resources with some kind of a standardized uniform interface. Again, bringing in API, application programming interface. So resources are manipulated by components and component requests and manipulate resources using some kind of a uniform interface, okay? In the case of HTTP, if you're using HTTP, then the interface consists of operations like get, put, post, delete. These are the common HTTP requests. You can read more about uh, these resources when you are talking about uh, HTTP per se. Generally speaking, when we submit things over the internet using an HTML form, either the request is get or post. Generally, it's written as post, but if you are looking at a link, if you click on a link, which will take you from one resource to another, it's usually GET. And you can tell by the URL. The GET request URLs show variables and their values and things like that. But I'm not going to go in detail into that. But again, everything in REST is considered as a resource. Every resource is identified by a URI, Uniform Resource Indicator. It uses uniform interfaces. Resources are handled using POST, GET, PUT, DELETE operations. Okay which are very similar to, if you're coming from a database world, very similar to create, read, update, delete, which are called the CRUD operations, C-R-U-D operations. And then again, we talk about stateless. Every request is an independent request. Each request from client to server must contain all the information necessary to understand the request. Communications are done via representations, which could be XML, which could be JSON, RESTful web service, 
and so on and so forth. So RESTful API is that it is flexible for data representation. That's one of the great things about REST. Okay, SOAP on the other hand uses what we call WSDL, which is what? Web Services Description Language. A lot of the people who are a fan of SOAP are because it uses WSDL, Web Services Description Language, okay. which basically defines a contract between client and service and is static by nature. SOAP builds an XML-based protocol on top of the HTTP Okay, which runs on what? TCP IP. So, SOAP describes functions and types of data, so just like XML. If you're familiar with XML, learning SOAP is no big deal. SOAP is sort of kind of a successor of XML RPC. Several programming languages have native support for SOAP, so they have built in APIs to talk to SOAP. So, binary data that is sent must be encoded first into a format such as Base64 encoded and stuff like that. And it could use several protocol te and technologies. For example, you would find uh, in SOAP WSDL being used, XSDs, uh, WS addressing. I mean, like a lot of the SOAP related technologies are used. So, again, here, Briefly, we talked about API, Application Programming Interface, which is a way for something to communicate with something else, in this case, two computers, two applications, when there is nothing in common. And when does communication happen over the web? It is web service. And the service could be SOAP or REST. SOAP is a protocol, and REST is an architecture. SOAP is XML-based where REST is protocol independent and it could use several formats for communication. Hope you would have enjoyed this tutorial and catch you in the next one, but remember, SOAP and REST by definition should not be compared, but if you really, really want to understand the difference between them, here you go. Have a great day.